day you realize the stars you were chasing shine bright deep inside you. When will you ever let it shine from within? Hello, and welcome back to Kingdom Reviews. I'm your host, Future Keybearer. Today we'll be journeying to the ruins of Hollow Bastion. As our heroes regroup at Disney Castle, Mickey proclaims that he'll go save Riku and stop Maleficent's plans. Sora wants to help too, however, his Keyblade is completely gone. But is that gonna stop him? What do you think? After the king leaves... What do you think we should do? Sora? Strange. He was here a moment ago. Oh, he left a while ago. Something about getting into a fight with a plumber? So Sora makes his way to Hollow Bastion and starts chasing down Pete, who's at the Rising Falls for some reason. And thus, much like the first game, we have to run around without the Keyblade. However, unlike Cage, one where you can still use spells, here you got literally nothing. Just try to run around and not get hit. Eventually, you catch up to Pete in the entry hall. However... Oh no! I'm trapped! Credit to Pete. I honestly didn't think he could pull it off. Now you guys all play nice whilst I finish setting up our little puppet show. Ugh, look, Pete, the I've Got No Strings act is getting old and stale at this point. Have fun with your new best friends. And Sora takes that advice as Goofy comes charging in to save the day. Fortunately, he's more than willing to continue chasing after Pete. By the way, have you seen Donald anywhere? Oh, you know, he's around. Well, ain't you a boy here to Coming in here when there ain't nothing you can do. I can wipe that smug look off your face. So as we go looking for Donald, Goofy joins the party and it's... interesting. Because Sora can't really do anything, the attack command now cycles through three modes of the partner AI. Follow, attack, and break blocks. All the physical commands in your deck have now become Goofy's special attacks. It's actually kind of cool to have this much direct control over the party like this. Although I will say that the follow command seems kind of useless. When it's set to attack, Goofy still follows Sora if there are no Heartless around, and it doesn't go to break blocks. So it probably would have been better to just leave it at two settings. Eventually, we find Donald under the castle. Hey, what's up with Donald dear? This is no time to go missing! You mean us? But I thought you were the one who went missing, Donald. What's the difference? What, is it just because Sora and Goofy are the bigger group? Donald, sorry. It's because my Keyblade got destroyed that we all ended up here in this place. No, we probably would have been here anyway. Regardless, after a friendship speech, Donald joins the party with his spells replacing your magic commands. However, no. This does not mean that you can get Donald to heal you whenever you want. Hope you stocked up on potions! Eventually, we make our way to the keyhole where Pete is two for two on the traps. Why the blazes would you chumps risk your necks for a lump of data? Why, he's a phony! You guys made him, and that keyblade of his! How does Pete know any of this? After, what, the third friendship speech in this level alone, the keyblade returns to Sora, allowing him to free Donald and Goofy. How? Sora, it looks to me like something inside of you has been changed somehow. Huh? Mickey! Where the hell have you been? What was inside of me that changed? I can't say what it is for sure. Oh, of course not. But I think a new part of you has been awakened. The Keyblade's power comes from the wielder's strength of heart. Okay, I know Pete asked, but is he just sitting there listening? You've become more than the system, Sora. The power you've found inside of you isn't like anybody else's. And when you access that power, that's what brought your Keyblade back. Well, and that's what I believe anyway. So, in other words, it's a theory. A GAME THEORY! So Pete retreats... ...into the keyhole, I guess. Let's go! Wait. I need to do this on my own. Eh, probably for the best. A DS card probably couldn't handle all of them fighting at once. So Sora goes in, and after beating the crap out of Pete, he sticks a mind-controlled Riku on us. All I had to do was load some of those bug thingies into your pally's animatronics. Don't forget the multimodal reflection sorting. Ah! 
God, fake Rikus just can't catch a break! After fighting him off, well, let's just say he's not looking so good. Fortunately, the Keyblade has an idea for how to help. Ah! 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 So despite the warnings of the others, Sora resolves to go inside Riku. Stop snickering! And no sooner than going inside, Sora gets his strength sapped away. However, Riku is able to tell him what he needs to do. Because Riku safeguards the journal's data, Sora basically has to run back through the worlds to regain his strength and deal with Riku's bugs. So, basically, this is to this game what the World Terminus was in KH1. A chance to see just how far you've come over the course of the journey. Or padding, depending on how you look at it. Afterwards, you have to take on Riku again, but honestly, I think this fight is a lot easier. Now that all the bugs are taken care of, it's time to make a hasty exit through an absolutely insane platforming segment, ending in a... fight with Maleficent. I mean, it's a perfectly fine fight, just... Why here? Anyway, once Sora is out, Riku is now able That's to open the pathway so Mickey and the others can return to the real world. But just as our heroes are making plans for future visits, Riku tells them that the system needs to reboot. And once it does, he and Sora won't remember the adventure they just had. But no time to focus on that, as apparently Pete and Maleficent are trapped in the deep reaches of the data, and if they don't get out before the reboot, they'll be killed. I, I see this as an absolute win. Now, of course, Sora just has to go after them. Which I have mixed feelings on. On the one hand, this absolutely is in character for Sora. But on the other hand, Sora has killed his fair share of Disney villains in the past. But on the other other hand, Data Sora here has not. Anyway, after a running gun segment, we see Pete and Maleficent being accosted by a pretty badass looking dark side. What? <laughs> Maleficent! Oh no, well we tried. Riku interjects with a theory that this is an evolution of the record of Sora's Heartless. Your memories disappeared too, but you managed to get those back. For some reason though, the pages of the journal, they stayed blank. And you think my Heartless is responsible for that? It makes sense. Does it? I mean, sure, in a franchise like this is as good an answer as any, but it's a bit of a leap in logic. Normally, defeating a Heartless causes its heart to be released. Then the heart's returned to the person who lost it. But when you defeat Heartless here in the Datascape, that wouldn't set any real hearts free. Okay, that tracks. Instead, I think what you released are probably the Heartless's minds. Why? Did the system dictate that the Heartless had to release something when they got defeated and the mind was just the second best thing? Long story short, Sora's Heartless is now a collection of all the Heartless's data, and Sora has to defeat it so he can't cause any more trouble. And honestly, this is the best Dark Side boss in the series. A lot more cool attacks with status effects to look out for, and it's really the only time I've ever been intimidated by this thing. But it doesn't just end with the Dark Side. It also takes on the form of Anti-Sora, which is a lot harder, but more fun than the one in KH1. Sora seems to have trouble delivering the final blow, but is saved by our good old Deus Ex Mikina. As Mickey holds the dark side in place, Sora finishes off the original Heartless. Pete! Maleficent! You're here! You're alright! As Riku sees the villains out, Mickey and Sora say their goodbyes, the king promising to relay the story of the Datascape to the real Sora and Riku. So that was Hollow Bastion. Hot damn! Much like the original game, this world made a great penultimate level. Sure, it redid a lot of concepts from the original game, but it put a new twist on them that made it enjoyable again. Well, that's it for this episode. Tune in next time as we return to a world maybe forgotten.